God's sake, Marty. I, why didn't you water it? Kev used to do that, didn't he? I didn't know Brian would die like this. Brian. Well, what's this file? Did you, have you seen this before? Oh, that, that's the Kev's About. Hello, you're listening to Watch Out Kev's About with me, Kevin DeKline. Here once more on the streets of Portsmouth, today we'll be discussing Brexit and what the hell does that mean? Today we have John and Paul. What's your view, John? Mate, it'd be great. For the NHS, I've seen those That's... of bus. You Is know, he putting on an accent? The billions of pounds saved on it. And you, Paul? What do you, what do you think? Uh, actually, John, I think you'll find the NHS will suffer without the staff from the union to support it. Mate, are you fucking mad? Those foreigners... Excuse... Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, I must apologise for the foul language. Please behave yourself, John. What? Just... Shit. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Uh, uh, what, what... What were we talking about? Uh, they're taking our jobs, I'm, though, aren't they? I've heard enough. Ben <sighs> Glad we got rid of him. What, shall I delete that? No. Is he going to want it, really? It's quite interesting, wasn't it? Take interest. I'm deleting it. So, they've brought us here again to talk about the upcoming election once yeah. more. Yeah. I don't know where the others are. Yes, well. How's uh, your campaign trail going? Yeah, pretty good, I'd say. There's a vast amount of support out there for us. Yeah. Good. Oh, pleased to hear it. Well, pleased if you know what I mean, but... Uh... When's the Lib Dem guy getting here? He's not coming. In fact, he was really quite rude. I suggested he should come along. Horrible. Why? Why? The Lib Dems need all the help they can get right now. You'd have thought so. UKIP couldn't get hold of them at all. Numbers just dead. Yeah, no surprise there, really. What about that independent? The... No. He was very rude. We've never met him before. No, that's what I thought. But he seemed to know a bit about us. Oh. I bet that. Arnie's been talking. Yeah. Where's Christian? He brought his... He just left his dog here and buggered off. What are we going to do with him? He'll be okay. It's going to be good. We're going to have to stick him upstairs or something. Well, the number of fucking smears and things that you guys are putting out there on a bunch of my counsellors. It does work both ways. <laughs> mm, no, my my people are pretty honest in their their conduct, at least. Yeah. Honest smears, eh? Is it? Just giving true information to the public, oh. what they need to know about the people who are representing them. Yeah, in your view, in your view. Yeah. The truth will out. That it will. <laughs> well, at least those two are here. They were, they were good last time. They, were, they really got at each other, you know. Mm. Do you remember what happened? Mm. Oh, you know, Marty, things happen. You know, there's the... But we, we're in the middle of it. We're in the middle of, like, you know, a, uh, an argument. It's going to happen occasionally. That's what we want. It's, it's a bit scary, though, isn't it? But no one's going to punch anyone today. I mean, we'll get them wound up. They might, they might do. That would be good. Hello, and welcome to Right Here, Right Now, with me, Mick Riggers. Today, we have our very special local election edition for you. So, in the studio with me, I have uh, Peter Stevens, the Labour MP for Portsmouth West. Um, and he's been on the campaign trail with, uh, with many of the Labour councillors. 
And Glenn Hamshaw, the Conservative uh, candidate for the Peter Sellers Ward. Thank you for coming on the show, both of you. So, we asked the public what they thought uh, were the most important issues for this local election, and the first, the very, very top thing that was talked about is air pollution. So, what, what is it that you would do, uh, your respective parties, about air pollution, Glenn? Well, the Conservative Party would extend the current park and ride scheme to take more cars off the road and then lessen the pollution. And we would also encourage people to cycle. A, a splendid example in London has been Boris Johnson. OK, look, let's be honest. You can't compare... You, you can't implement Boris bikes in a city that is vastly different to London in, in terms of everything, in terms of climate and population. I mean, OK, look, so... The problem is, London and Portsmouth, vastly different in climate, people will not be as easily encouraged to cycle here. And on top of that, the fact is, this is not the solution. What we need is public transport. We need investment in public transport so that we have young people, give young people the access to the, to the, um, to buses, trains, etc. And it will take many cars off the roads. I mean, th this is one of the most densely populated cities in Europe. D densely populated uh, islands, in fact. And as such, we th there are cars bumper to bumper. If we have public transport, that that l would lessen it by tenfold. OK, but I, I mean, I asked you both a question about air pollution, and as far as I'm aware, you've answered with public transport. It's directly relevant. I mean, air pollution, air pollution is a factor of how densely populated the city is, and that basically brings in a lot of vehicles moving in um, left, right and centre, which creates a carbon emission. So that that is the direct link with air pollution. I, I agree, but not with the solution. Well, I, I doubt you would. But also, you know, that there's, a lot, there's a lot of issues in terms of also that uh, public transport would help solve. Less vehicles on the road means less wear and tear on the road as well. I mean, th that is... Uh, I've been thinking... You know these potholes, we've got a lot of potholes, haven't we? Yeah. Well, what if, because the hole's already there, isn't it? So you could put things like a, a ficus or, or any other kind of tree into that pothole, and that would help with the air pollution. I mean, obstructing the highway sounds like a great idea. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I'm sorry to uh, our guests and to people listening at home. Our producer is currently mourning a ficus that died on this show. Brian. Oh, God. Sorry to hear that, mate. Thank you. Now, the second top uh, issue that we, we found from our polling is the issue of crime. So, um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Peter, what would, you, what would you do about the crime issue? Well, if you look at um, Portsmouth as a city, uh, the Conservative uh, Council, years ago, got rid of the hate crimes unit. Cut the hate crimes unit and it now no longer exists. This is in a city where a pig's head was found on a gate to a Muslim school. So clearly these services are needed. The crime is there. The, the, the conflict within this city is there. There's nationalist activism in this city. So much racism and... and, and oh, now that is marvellous coming from your party, which is basically anti-Semitic. It has divided your party. Because of a few bad eggs, you're labelling the whole party answer. And we are, and we are eggs. weeding them out. Right, we, please to hear it. Yeah, well, we are. I mean, didn't you see the, the incident that happened just the other week? Oh, the, the joke. Yes. It was a joke, was it? It was a joke. Not a, a very good one. <sighs> That's rich coming from you. But, in any case, we are working on... Removing the, the... Yes, you've managed to split your party, whereas the Conservative Party sticks by everyone within okay, the party. Okay, so, so, you're, so you're telling me no United matter... we stand. So united... Not divided like the Labour Party. If you say so. so... An absolute disgrace. So are you telling me that if there were, say, someone who would uh, make a massively racist comment in your party, they would not suffer any consequence? And that, that speaks wonders about your party. <laughs> My party wouldn't do that. We'd be hung out to dry if we made that, jokes that, the same way that as the is hilarious. ridiculous and shameful Labour Party. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe turn. that for one second. I mean, look, if your party actually cared for race relations, 
Would they cut a hate crimes unit in the, in the Portsmouth City Council? No, One they would not. One has to live within they would one's means. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so we're going to go into, into that, are we? So one living within one's means. Mate, this city in, has needs of those that... Like, yeah, that but that, we don't need anti-Semitism. Uh, I think you've got a point there, Peter. The Conservatives are hardly ones to be uh, leading this discussion on anti-Semitism or, or lecturing anyone on racism in general, uh, not when you look at your party as a whole. Now, I think that there have been some anti-Semitic comments, but there have also been comments that are being called anti-Semitic, which are actually just uh, critical of the Israeli state. And we have got to be very, very careful to, uh, to identify those separately. There is adverseness to Zionism and there is anti-Semitism. And anti-Semitism is disgusting, but there is a discussion to be had about Zionism. See, this is a massive issue. I mean, all right, look, if, if you're going to... You, you can't label every criticism of a group of, group of people based on... Uh, to, to say that that criticism is because of their, their protected characteristic. Such as uh, such as being um, be being uh, is Israeli or, or Jewish, you cannot say that just because we we are critical of what they're doing to Palestine. Th these are completely separate issues. That we are not targeting them on a factor of race. It's on a factor of policy. They are taking people's land. They are ravaging people's resources. It, it their doesn't, homes it doesn't it doesn't take away from the fact that the that the Labour Party is anti-Semitic. That there's literally no reasoning with you. And you there is and, no and reasoning. In such you, a light -hearted are you way. really that absolutely like delusional that you think that just because of we we oppose palace? Uh, You're going to say deluded, we, we, weren't you? You're going to say deluded. Well, yes. And you're deluded if you think you're going to win this election. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, we, we've got possible... But you're going to win it on the anti-Semitic card, are you? I, I'd, I'd uh, like to see yeah. you try. To be fair, th this city is fairly racist as it is, in terms of the nationalist racist activism that there is. Uh, but it doesn't have a name for anti-Semitism, and, and we don't want it brought in by your people, thank you very much. Coming from you, that is so rich. Well, if this was happening in the Conservative Party, we'd be hung out to dry. It wouldn't be acceptable. You, you'd be having a field day with us, but no, we act in a proper way, not in the childish and adolescent way that the Labour Party Childish behaves. and adolescent. Childish and we adolescent. We address issues you need to grow up as they appear. We have to actually... And you need look. to look at them in an adult way. So, 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 you're, so you're telling... And we are all together. Look, stand together so in this country. Well, oh, um, there's been a technical problem. Obviously... I'm going to think he's... With a lot, a we're wanker to with a lot of the way how we're, yeah. we're just... Yeah, he jumps off, flies off the handle. I mean, I mean he's not sure I can say it to you, but he's got some yeah. policies, I mean, but... He's, he's we're clearly the ones with, like, get it through. more solid whereas, argument. Whereas we're, we're actually talking about with our actually policies. providing public services, yeah. and they're just yeah, a mess. Yeah. Like, they're they're, they're, they're talking about providing away. bikes for this city. Yeah, I mean, come I on, let's be honest. How are bikes going to be popular in this city? Lottie, why did you do that? Because he was getting it all was like... just getting good. They were fighting like cats and dogs. That was brilliant. That's what I was worried about. You know what happened last time? Oh, the, the, the audience don't care. They can't see. They're just here. That was a great... I can... Did you ask them about their policies on podcast producer punching? No. I'm going to punch a podcaster producer in a minute. But yeah, as, as I was saying, we've really, got yeah. a, lot of, yeah. a, a lot of ground on them. Right? They seem to... Yeah. Sorry about that, right? Um, yeah, we've got a lot of ground with this. Keep on right? Hold on, Hold on, sir. All of us. So we've discussed many of the issues that were raised to us uh, that, that the public feel are the most important for this local election. But I would like you now to sum up what your party stands for locally in less than a minute. Okay, so we'll start with you, Glenn. Well, the Conservative Party stands for high values and we'll continue to build on our splendid work in as much as carefully watching the budgets, bringing in innovative schemes such as increasing the, the amount of cycling in the city and also, again, extending the uh, park and ride system. Uh, we will continue to maintain our buildings, including, including the stock of council housing 
and I think we've looked forward to a bright future. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, Peter? The Labour, the Labour Party. For the many, not the few. We need to invest more in the public services of this city. The fact is, the police services have been cut, the domestic violence service unit has been completely removed, the domestic, uh, sorry, not the, uh, the hate crimes unit, completely removed, the domestic violence service cuts that have been happening from the third, uh, the domestic violence service unit cut from 13 respondents down to five. This is a massive problem. We, we are basically, at the moment, our council has been ravaged for its public services. We need to actually make sure that we provide a better standard of living for, for our citizens and our constituents. It is important that we actually give our, our population the better, um, better value for money for their taxes. We need to invest in the public transport for young people. We need to invest in the police service. We need to invest in um, in the services that and 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 also um, you know local services such as you know uh, reparations such as you know as as we've mentioned potholes. We've mentioned uh, air pollution as well. Th these are things that Labour needs to start tackling, and it's important that we need to actually show the the um, the people of the city that we care that we actually want to make a difference and we actually want to improve their standard of living in this city. Thank you. Well, he had more than a minute. Thank you, Peter. Now, my take on this whole local election is that it doesn't largely matter who controls our council at the moment. Budgets have been slashed massively from the top and the only place that we can make any kind of a change for our country as a whole is in the highest levels of office. That being said, this local election will prove to make a, a massive impact on Theresa May's government. Her strong and stable slogan is going to look more and more silly the more she loses seats in councils, the more she loses uh, votes through the Houses of, House of Lords. We need to make sure that that happens, that that message resonates within the Conservative Party, that change is coming. And sure, it won't come from these local elections. It won't come until we force this Conservative government into another general election, but that could happen if we keep plying the pressure. So get out on the 3rd of May and vote. Vote for whoever, as long as it's not the Conservatives.